This is your Adventist News Update, a service of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. I'm Andrea Musgrove. Coming up in the news, Bahamas Academy reveals events to celebrate its centennial. The church reflects on decades of humanitarian service, and the Seventh-day Adventist World Church is fast approaching over 18 million members. These stories and more on this week's Adventist News Update. This is your Adventist News Update. Thank you for joining us this week. Bahamas Academy continues to celebrate 100 years of Christian education. And recently, in a press conference at the Seventh-day Adventist Church headquarters for the South Bahamas Conference, administrators of the organization and school informed the country of the activities planned for the Centennial Institution. Laverne Stirrup was on hand and filed this story. It is said that 100 years is a long time, but the Education Director of the South Bahamas Conference, Mrs. jones Cavalla, said that the Centennial Institution is ready for the next 100 years of providing top-notch education for the youth of the Bahamas. A number of events will mark this milestone. Uh, uh, the, one of the highlights, which will be a Centennial Gala, that is uh, going to be an experience of a lifetime. The one that will be the epitome of a hundred years of existence. Mr. Anthony Burroughs, former student and principal of Bahamas Academy, gave a special invitation to all UBA stars out there. We are inviting all of our former students and we have a list that dates back to 1935. But individuals who have attended our institution and are still in our country and around the world making a valuable contribution. So we are saying to all of them, this is a good time to return home, to reflect on the memories and to see where God has brought us from and what we are giving back to the Bahamian society. President of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Pastor Paul Scavella, spoke of the official opening of the school's facilities as an accomplishment attributed to one person only. November 7 through 10, rather through 17, is the transition from our old campus uh, to the new campus with this new facility. Uh, it is a mega undertaking, and uh, it has only been accomplished through the grace and mercy of God, financially and otherwise. Reporting for the SBC Media Network, I'm Laverne Sturrup. Often the question is asked, what is the church doing to address the various social ills in our country and, and to assist persons who are burdened with challenges in our communities? While it is not published on a daily basis, the Seventh-day Adventist Church continues to touch many lives each day through ministries such as the Adventist Community Services, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, ADRA, and many educational and youth-focused initiatives and more. The humanitarian efforts of these ministries are highlighted during the Adventist Church's annual in-gathering program. The in-gathering initiative provides the church with two key opportunities. First, it allows members to share Christ with the public by highlighting what the church is doing to uplift the human condition of many. Secondly, it affords them the privilege to invite their friends, neighbors, and family members to partner with the church in providing the financial means to carry out the mission that Christ assigned to his church. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Atlantic Caribbean region launched its annual in-gathering campaign in October. The Inter-American Division of Seventh-day Adventists, the parenting body of the Atlantic Caribbean Union, of which the South Bahamas Conference is a part, held its annual year-end meetings in Tuxla, South Mexico from October 23rd to the 29th. During the time, two of the local mission fields gained conference status and a new $3 million headquarters for the Chiapas Union was dedicated. Consecrating the edifice was Dr. Israel Leto, president of the Inter-American Division, along with Pastor Mike 
Ryan, one of the vice presidents of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. During the meetings, a number of policy amendments were discussed, along with the growth in membership and biblical stewardship. Twenty-two unions, including the Atlantic Caribbean Union, was present at the year-end meetings, where Dr. Leonard Johnson, president of the Atlantic Caribbean Union, accepted an award on behalf of the union for hosting the students of Montemorales University. If you would recall, during July of this year, the 100 Students Church Planting Missionary Initiative was held in Nassau, Bahamas, where the new Spanish company in the South Bahamas Conference, La Senda de la Vida, was established. The Atlantic Caribbean Union will hold its year-end meetings from November 7th through to the 12th right here in Nassau. And the Festival of the Laity continues in the North Bahamas Conference. Across the Abacos and Grand Bahama, a number of churches are involved in a series of evangelistic crusades, including the Bethsaida Seventh-day Adventist Church, where lay evangelist Elder Augustine held a num led a number of persons into the family of God. In Abaco, the Salem Seventh-day Adventist Church engaged in a children's crusade where each night the budding dynamic preachers proclaimed God's word. The History Question is designed to provide you, our viewers, with information about the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Bahamas. And we want to thank all of you who participate, and we say congratulations to those of you who have won prizes for your history diligence. Now, here's your time once again to try this week's question. Your History Question of the day is... In 1893, how did C.H. Richards and his wife initially spread the Advent message through the Bahamas? Was it A, via printed materials, B, small group ministries, or C, via sermons? When we come back after the break, we will have more news on a taste of the islands. First Peter 1 18 19 Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. John 13, 33-35 My children, I will be with you only a little longer. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Deuteronomy 10 verse 12 Serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Proverbs 14 21 Being kind to the needy brings happiness. Welcome back to News Update. The Bahamas Academy Early Learning Center held their annual Taste of the Islands Festival this Thursday at the school grounds on Old Trail Road. Here's our correspondent with more on how our toddlers see the world. This year, the students of the Early Learning Center of Bahamas Academy got a scrumptious taste of their homeland with their annual Taste of the Islands Day celebration held at the school. Diane Jones, principal of the ELC, says that the aim of the program is to help children from an early age to be patriotic and loyal to their country and to what it stands for. The festivities also seek to familiarize pupils with symbols associated with the Bahamas. This year, the national flag, the flamingo, the blue marlin, and the yellow elder were amongst the main focus. Anthony Burroughs, principal of Bahamas Academy, brought remarks and commended the organizers of the events for a program that seeks to instill an appreciation of the Bahamian way of life in our children and to give them a sense of cultural identity. Parents did not miss the opportunity to join their children in the activities, and the teachers showed their dedication to the school's motto, Touching Hearts to Educate Minds. For SBC Media Network, I'm Felicia Dattis. 
And in upcoming events for the South Bahamas Conference, if you are just joining us on this broadcast of News Update, Bahamas Academy will be celebrating its 100th birthday in grand style. The institution will be hosting a centennial gala on Thursday, the 14th of November at 7 p.m. at the Sheraton Hotel and Resort in Cable Beach. If you do not have your tickets as yet, log on to the conference website at www.southbahamasconference.org or see the weekly Logos publication for this information. And the official opening of the new Bahamas Academy School Campus on Marshall Road will be held on Sunday, November 17th at 3 p.m. So make plans now to attend all of these historic events. The New Providence Seventh-day Adventist Church commenced its Fall Evangelism 2013 two weeks ago under the theme, Revealing His Grace and Prophecy. A cadre of powerful preachers are lined up. Attendees at the earlier sessions were blessed by the preaching of Pastors Calvin Watkins and Kay Anson Aubrey. And this weekend, on November 1st to the 3rd, join New Providence congregation and be blessed by the preaching of Pastor T. Basil Stirrup. The remaining preachers from November 8th to the 3rd are Pastors Henry Monka, Claudius Morgan, Dr. C. Wesley Knight, and Pastor Peter Kerr. And on Sunday, November 10th at 7 p.m., the Gambea and Agape churches will join forces in taking the gospel to its community, family, and friends. Pastor T. Basil Stirrup will present God's Word at these series of meetings under the caption, The Gospel According to the Book of Romans. The meetings are designed to strengthen, enlighten, and provide the steps needed for persons to apply the Word of God to their daily lives. So you are invited to be a part of this spiritual summit and to bring a friend as you participate in in this unforgettable walk through the book of Romans. And I promise you, Pastor Sturm is going to give you a good sermon. The fourth annual Feet Can Last a Lifetime Diabetic Foot Seminar will be held at the Berea Seventh-day Adventist Church on Blue Hill Road on Tuesday, November 12th at 7.15 p.m. All persons who are diabetic or who know or love a diabetic are welcome to attend. There will be free blood glucose and diabetic foot screening from 6.15 p.m. and refreshments will be served. To reserve a spot, call 6 1-3-9-0-8. Also, health professionals interested in volunteering or learning how to examine the diabetic foot are asked to call the contact number below. Plan to attend and let's save a leg and save a life. People who are emotionally healthy are in control of their emotions and their behavior. They are able to handle life's challenges, build strong relationships, and recover from setbacks. But just as it requires effort to build or maintain physical health, so it is with mental and emotional health. Improving your emotional health can be a rewarding experience, benefiting all aspects of your life, including boosting your mood, building resilience and adding to your overall enjoyment of life. Try these tips to help find the right balance in your life. 1. Value yourself. 2. Take care of your body. 3. Surround yourself with good people. 4. Give of yourself. 5. Learn how to deal with stress. 6. Learn to keep a calm mind. 7. Set realistic goals. 8. Break up the monotony in your life. Try something new. 9. Avoid alcohol and other drugs. And always get help when you need it. I'm Bridget Bastian, and this has been your health tips, courtesy of Adventist Television. And remember, God wants us to prosper and be in good health. And now we go to the Record and Focus Christian News magazine where the Seventh-day Adventist Church realizes over 18 million members worldwide. World leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church have revealed the denomination is fast approaching 18 million members with a baptism occurring every 30 seconds on average. The growth is overwhelmingly in Africa, Latin America and Asia, which now account for about 85% of the church's membership. Growth in North America, Europe, Australia and New Zealand is slow or even declining, 
although these regions still provide a financial base for the world church. The new statistics were released at annual council meetings along with administrative reports and suggested changes to the Adventist Church's official statements of belief. Delegates at the 2015 General Conference will vote on updated and more inclusive language as well as a strengthening of the Church's statement on creation. Your history question of the day was in 1893, how did C.H. Richards and his wife initially spread the Advent message to the Bahamas? The correct answer is A. Via printed materials. So my kids had a walkathon this week and of course they are high schoolers now so they are not asking people for sponsorship. That's so elementary. They would much prefer to reach into my pocket and get the money. Well this time they took the sponsorship from their own kitties. But I said to my youngest daughter Evan, why don't you call the grandparents and aunties and uncles and goddies and I'm sure you will be able to get more money for your school. But after some hesitation she decided to call and as predicted every Everyone she called said yes. I looked at her and I said, there you go. All you had to do was ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And if our earthly parents and aunties and uncles are willing to give you good gifts, you know your Heavenly Father wants to shower you with blessings. In fact, He promises to bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ever ask or think. Go ahead and ask Him. God is waiting to bless you. On behalf of the production team of News Update, thanks for joining us for this week's broadcast. I'm Andrea Musgrove. <laughs>